This is Coin Lady Channel with the latest from John Deaton, attorney. Even more recently, this afternoon, he made an intriguing post on AIX, previously known as Twitter, in which he remarked, near the conclusion, quote, if reading this doesn't disgust you, I don't know what to say, end quote. I think by the end of this film, everyone watching will be nodding their heads and saying, yep, I certainly hope so. It's possible that some people won't be convinced by what attorney Deaton has to say here, but I certainly am. Look, he just admitted reality, and that's a large part of what he's trying to say. Indeed, he did. The group, led by Joseph Lubin, had some good sense when they paired up with Jay Clayton's old law firm, Solvay & Cromwell, which had previously represented Clayton when he was SEC chair. That's why he's conceding that it was a good idea, even though it caused some people to exclaim, whoa, these are awful. That or this is horrible, sleazy behavior. No need to apologize, it's the truth. But if you take a step back and think about it, John Deaton is just crushing it. He then notes that had Ripple used a similar strategy, the company likely wouldn't have spent over two years fighting the SEC in court. But before we go any further, I should state that I have no training in law or finance. Please do not take anything I say as professional advice. Furthermore, you should not use what I say as a basis for making any financial decisions. Okay, I'm just a fan that occasionally posts videos to YouTube about crypto-related stuff for the heck of it. Okay, here's what Deaton's legal representation has to say. Many XRP holders took exception to my statement that Joe Lubin's swift hiring of Sullivan and Cromwell to represent consensus following Clayton's appointment was brilliant. Lubin hired several Sullivan and Cromwell attorneys to work for consensus, and he even made a Sullivan and Cromwell partner the deputy general counsel. I was going to pause anyhow, so. Feel free to have a seat. And, yes, I do get it. Although I don't agree with their viewpoint, I can see why individuals feel the way they do. You could argue from this vantage point that all of these actions are important. It's dishonest since it relies on insider knowledge and blah blah blah. Okay, but what did that lead to? Oh my, I forgot about the SEC consensus and Sue Joe Lubin? Why wouldn't the founders and theory predict that? So, all we're doing is facing facts. So, have a look at this. In response to Senator Elizabeth Warren's inquiries, Attorney Deaton claims it was ingenious and clever because it ensured that Clayton would recuse himself from voting on an enforcement action against one of his law firm's big clients. Clayton promised to step aside from any enforcement action involving his firm's clients and not cast a dissenting vote. As for the policy, I've watched the video before Jay Clayton was even sworn in, so I can tell you that it's not new. Attorney Deaton here notes that he was asked that very question and responded that he would be withdrawing from the case. So, it's possible, at least theoretically. The way he figured out that I'm not even trying to fix it was rather clever, actually. The attorney's handling of the case was subpar. Even if there were no insider behavior or cooperation between Jay Clayton and Joe Lubin, this would be the case. Also, I'm not claiming that there was something else in this statement. I'm merely stating the bare minimum. That would mean that Joe Lubin anticipated Jay Clayton's need to disqualify himself from this case. That's it, dead on. There must be some strategic thinking behind this, right? Deaton says, I've read the deposition of Hinman, and at Clayton's suggestion I contacted Lubin. God knows how many times Clayton contacted Henman to find out how the hundreds of meetings Henman was having with people who were not clients of Sullivan and Cromwell were going. It was clear that Clayton was helping his law firm represent Lubin and Consensus. Additionally, Clayton asked several times about the Consensus gatherings and similar events. Oh, I see. Visually, it's a disaster because, well, usually if there's smoke, there's fire. I think that's something we can both agree on. Yet nonetheless. Jay Clayton is present, he shows little enthusiasm for the many visit leads and crypto-related topics that have come his way, but when it comes to Sullivan and Cromwell, he definitely wants to double-check in with him. Isn't that a touch-out of the ordinary? The lawyer gave up at that point. 
The fact that Simpson Thatcher, the law firm where Hinman worked and where he shared in the firm's profits until his death, is a member of the Enterprise Ethereum Alliance must be a complete and total coincidence, right? Yes, that's to be clear, I'm being sarcastic about the SEC Ethics Office's repeated warnings to Hinman to end his violations of the Criminal Financial Conflict Act. For instance, the fact that Hinman disobeyed the Ethics Office for the third time by giving a speech declaring Bitcoin and ETH non-securities and basing his speech on his own emails and then meeting his partner from Simpson Debtors China office to discuss Canon's IPO, a company that sold Bitcoin and ETH mining equipment, was a complete and utter coincidence. It's been great, by the way. The excess of sarcasm, which I adore, is completely justified in this case. Then Dean adds that Hinman did, in fact, make money off of his law practice. After making that remark, he made over $10 million in law firm profits, money that wasn't part of his retirement package. With retirement benefits factored in, Hinman made $15 million while working at the SEC. He says he had no idea his law company was a member of the Ethereum Alliance, which is completely false. After voting for the enforcement action against Ripple, Clayton promptly accepted a position with One River, which had placed a $1 billion bet on Bitcoin and ETH 22 months earlier in October of 2000. It's probably simply a coincidence. Okay, I agree with you. I get how this appears to others. No one here seems to be seriously contesting that. Is it possible that the only individuals who disagree with this are obscure crypto enthusiasts like Cardano's Charles Hoskinson? Do you seriously doubt that such people exist? Alternatively, Charles Gasparini. These seeming inconsistencies are, however, very real. Those kickbacks that Hindman obviously received are damning evidence that there was more than just the appearance of wrongdoing, you guys have the complete story. It's blatantly evident that this is the case, but it's also fine to acknowledge reality, that's why I said, don't blame John Dean for this, at the outset. This is the way things are. He is merely stating the obvious. In any case, Deaton keeps going. As you can see, Clayton kept his word and didn't vote down an enforcement case involving a client of his law business. Instead, on his way out of the SEC building, he filed an enforcement action against the largest competitor of one of his law firm's clients. Exactly. Clayton and Hinman benefited from this turn of events. This is all wonderful news for them, but it came at a price. The second largest cryptocurrency market. Also, I brought up several parallels between the XRP and ETH platform's potential applications. We'll have to wait and see how much of that actually helps ETH gain traction. Then, Deaton claims that Clayton filed the complaint despite being strongly cautioned not to do so by Joe Grunfest, an unbiased witness who had supported the Ether founders. Clayton was forewarned by Grundfest that innocent holders could lose billions of dollars, destroying their financial stability. While there was no pressing need for action in this non-fraud related matter. But he still had to file. It's hard to fault Lubin for as astute as he was in employing Sullivan and Cromwell, had Brad Garland House. And Stewart done the same, it's likely that the lawsuit might have been avoided by having Clayton recuse himself. They didn't, though. We've already spent over $200 million, and there's still more to come. Thus, I shall pause. Even while we don't know for sure, I think it's quite possible that this is the case. If the void hadn't been filled, then what? If so, by whom, please? Someone besides claim, now Clayton seems to have had special incentives in this case. As a result, we can't say for certain how a vote with a different human would have turned out. However, I believe that they were prepared for the lawsuit because it was filed so many years later. I. The only way Clayton could be sure it would happen is if this were his last chance to get the project completed and out the door. That's why we wanted it so much. But if you had someone else who didn't have that motive, well, if they're already just you know, they're not in a biased position already that because we're in the we've been proven to be on the right side of history, even that would have made it way less likely that there would have been a lawsuit. And this has affected each and every one of us. 
Since XRP did trend higher in 2021, I believe it would have set a new record high during the crypto bull run if this had not happened. Among the top 10 cryptocurrencies, it was the only one that didn't reach a new all-time high. He doesn't believe this is a coincidence. Finally, he says, I don't know what to say if reading this doesn't disgust you. We can't keep living in a system where picking a law firm can mean the difference between legal hell and a regulatory advantage, and you don't have to believe anyone did anything illegal to see that. For an attorney, that's about as on the money as it gets. Absolutely. And thus I get that there could be a counter-argument. That's always a plus, by the way. I can still like and appreciate someone even if they disagree with me. To each his own, then, if you disagree with me or John Deaton, that's great. Those are unquestionably marginalized viewpoints. And I think there's strong reason for that to be the case here. Just ask yourself if Ripple had done something similar, like hire Sullivan and Cromwell as a security detail. Was it really their plan all along? Do you think you'd feel bad about it? On a personal level, I doubt I would because, well, look at me, I can. To be fair, I have my own prejudices. To put it simply, I support XRP. And I hope it is successful. So, I'm being completely forthright when I say that Sherry sale is biased. If it is not against the law, then it is not. This is the proper way to play the game. Okay. Ain't no rulebook that I made. And you would likely back me up if rule changes are what you want. As long as you're not doing anything against the law, hiring whichever law firm will get you the maximum gain is the best course of action. Yes. I don't give advice on money matters. Nothing I say should influence your buying or selling decisions. Please like and subscribe my channel. See you later, bye.